Okay, welcome everybody. We are live, locked and loaded. The Mr. Bass and Get Your Fish On live podcast show. And yes. Uh, right on. How's it going, Steve? How are you, man? I'm doing good. I was looking up something on the other screen over here. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I have a, a tendency to do that during the show as well. Yes. That's one of the, one of the beauties of looking at a computer screen while you're doing a show. Mm -hmm. It's super tempting to uh, click away, especially on stuff we're talking about at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this is going to be kind of a fun show uh, tonight. We're going to, uh, we, you know, uh, we have a little powwow each week, a little prep meeting to talk about what we're going to do. And uh, Steve suggested, why don't we do a beginner show? And, uh, you know, uh, one of my questions was, well, uh, what about the people who are not beginners on the show? And he brought up a really good point. You know, uh, one of the things about fishing that we that we all try to do as we get more and more involved in the fishing community is we try to share the love. Uh, and, uh, you know, one of the things that Steve says at the end of every show he does is take a kid fishing. Yes. And, uh, you know, that's a big deal. And, uh, so we know that we've got some expert fishermen that tune in and watch us. And so that's the beauty of a live stream. That's the beauty of chatting and commenting. Not only uh, can you, uh, can uh, Steve and I uh, talk about what to do if you're a brand new fisherman, if you're a beginning bass fisherman, you want to learn how to fish, uh, you can also share your tips, tricks, techniques, ideas tonight on the live stream. And I know it's going to help some newbies, some young guys and gals, and and maybe you don't have to be young at young young at heart. Uh, so should be interesting, should be fun and enjoyable. And uh, we're just going to roll with it and see where it takes us. Can I, before we jump into this. Absolutely. Can I just ask <clears throat> what, what, uh, what what's on the plate for the Mr. Bass channel over the next week? I mean, I saw yesterday's unboxing. Yeah. What did you think it. of that? I, the, liked, uh, I actually kind of liked it. Yeah. The one that I liked more than anything is that the company wrote in your comments how much they appreciated your video. And they I did. They did. How about that? Salt Creek Tackle. That's it. And, uh, you know, I've never heard of these guys until uh, a few weeks ago when one of my subscribers said, hey, you ought to check these guys out. They really got something cool going on. And you know me, if there's a new tackle monthly tackle box out there, I got to try it. <laughs> So, you are the king of those, by the way. Yeah. I, just want, I just want to say <laughs> the king of subscription tackle boxes is Mr. Bass. Yeah. Hands down. You're not kidding. So, I mean, all it didn't take much persuasion. He just told me the name of it, and I went and looked it up and thought, heck, I <laughs> got to go try that thing. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, he had some interesting stuff in there. I mean, you know, he had this, uh, this $22 crankbait which I think is pretty cool looking. I, I, I don't know if it's going to be a good fisher. This thing really kind of baffled me here. This, uh, this buzz bait with the, that one baffles the, me with the bullet weight on it and the free swinging trocar, uh, flipping hook that I, I, I'm going to try it. The, the guy on the salt Creek tackle company said they're going to put a video out on how to rig it. But, uh, that, that interested me. And, and, uh, and then they they had this. Uh, this is the last one I'll show you. They had this uh, top shelf um, swim original bait. swim bait. Comes in a four inch and a five inch. This is the five inch version. And all the comments on Tackle Warehouse says this thing's real money. Mm -hmm. I've never fished it, but you know the the trick with the Salt Creek is they're supposed to be custom lures, custom. Yeah. You know, so not off the shelf uh, everyday assembly line tackle. So that's, that did intrigue me because you and I both really like, we like cool tackle. We like specialty tackle, you yeah. know, and uh, we like custom made tackle too. So interesting that got a ton of comments on that video already. So yeah. I think it, it, it is interesting. It's $70 though. That's the killer. Yeah. Uh, 
even for me, a guy who has no problem problems dropping dropping coin on uh, a monthly box, seventy bucks is a lot of money. A lot of money. What'd you think about the sunscreen? I mean, okay, the sunscreen. <laughs> um, where is I that mean, sunscreen? If, I did they put it somewhere. in as as a part of the box, or was that like an added thing to say, you know, you yeah. should be using sunscreen? I don't know. This little thing costs ten dollars if you go to their website. It's a lot of money for it's, sunscreen. It's pricey sunscreen for as small as it is, but it's supposed to be. I don't know. Uh, I, I yeah I I uh, even if if even if I could use some sunscreen, I don't know if I'd look at it as a benefit in the box, it, it, unless it was just a total freebie, not included in my price. I, I like the the little. The little B said, if you have to watch a video on how to rig the lure, I'm not buying it. I have to say, I am so right down with that. It isn't even funny because I, I did a closer look on this uh, swim bait, this like uh, Japanese swim bait that you had to hook it on the side. It didn't like, I don't even, I, I, God's honest truth. It was the, they sent it to me and it was, I just destroyed the first one. I mean, it was. It looked like it had a dog had chewed on it. It was so bad after me trying to get the hook in right. Then I had to watch a video and I'm like, oh my gosh, this makes so much more sense. But then I was like, as soon as I put it in the water, I'm like, it moved beautiful. But I'm like, you know how long it's going to take to re-rig? I'm not really <laughs> sure if I want to do that. That reminds me of uh, the very first time I ever threw a spook. And... Oh. I just threw it out there and reeled it in. <laughs> you know, just skipped across I, the water. I just reeled it in. I was like, huh, that's interesting. Uh, <laughs> what, I wonder what you do with that. Well, you know what's funny is uh, the I, did that, I right. did that several times, and I got bit on it. Did and then you? I thought, yeah, and then I thought, okay, this must be the way you, you work this lure. And it wasn't until somebody filled me in later. Yeah. No, that's not what you do with a spook, man. A spook here in Florida, if you go like saltwater fishing for trout and stuff, the Zara spook is, it's gold. I, ha yeah. I have one here. Oh, it's an amazing spook. bait. I have, this chug bug has caught me thousands of fish. Thousands. It is so beat up, it just looks like hell. Is that the uh, Storm Lures chug bug? Yeah, Storm. This is the yeah, yeah. This yeah. Is one of the first ones. Yeah, and you, I mean, you can see all the scrapes. I lost the back hook to it. There's no back hook, so I I just retired it. And it's funny because uh, this one was this one's like twenty some years old. The yeah. new ones don't work the same as these the, the, as this one. Yeah, that's uh, like the so, old wiggle warts. The old wiggle warts definitely fish different than the new ones. Yeah. Great bait. Okay, so I asked the question, what else is coming up on the channel for you this week? Uh, well, let me answer Matthew here before I okay, tell you sorry. that. Uh, he's asking if I ever tried that DRT Joker, and I just got that uh, a month or so ago, Matthew, so I haven't thrown it yet. So I can't help you, buddy. Uh, but go watch the videos. There's a ton of people out there who swear by it. And uh, there's a Japanese guy that just slays them on this in a video, uh, and he's fishing from the bank. I'm amazed at these Japanese uh, fishermen uh, that will throw $200 lures from the bank. You know, I mean, th not that that DRT Joker is that much, but it's a very pricey lure. And uh, that's just, boy, you're going to lose them th throwing them on the bank like that. But anywho, all right. So what else is going on in the Mr. Bass channel? Well, I got uh, another uh, backpack review video coming out shortly. Nice. I've got, uh, I created a video um, this last week uh, that uh, where I used, um, I basically I did an entire tutorial on the uh, bladed jig and specifically the Thunder Cricket uh, because that's the bladed jig that comes in the Monster Bass boxes on a regular basis. So okay. for Monster Bass, I created a, a video uh, about that, went out and fished with it. And, and that is, by far, it's the it's the best bladed jig out there that Strike King makes. Uh, you know, they used to do that pure poison. Do they still have the pure poison? I don't. I, don't, I haven't seen that. I, one I don't know. I don't know if they still have that, but but their Thunder Cricket, you know, was kind of their. Uh, we're going to compete with the Jackhammer product, mm -hmm. and you know, you and I both like the Jackhammer better, but the Thunder Cricket is still can hold its own for sure. 
it just has uh, the thunder cricket has just such a different sound underwater. Uh, yeah, that's the biggest thing about that. I mean, yep. I did a, a chatterbait video. One of the first videos I ever did was a chatterbait video, and I put like jackhammer original chatterbait, uh, the mealy, uh, the 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 thunder cricket, all of them side, all five of them side by side in the video. So you could actually see how they work as they come up towards you, how they, yeah. how they start up, and and no under n no question that was the hardest video for me. To, and it probably wouldn't take me as long now, but I spent physically months on that video. Um, it's the only one I've done that, I, and I haven't even released it. The longest one I've worked on, I've worked on a frog video for fourteen months now. Wow! Um, to get different. I have, an, I have something up here that I need to get rid of out of here and just move on. But <laughs> there's uh, some there's something I've been trying to, to produce that I that not, it's it's just hard to it's hard for me to get it done. That's all. Well, you do get some uh, good underwater vid video on some of your reviews as well, and I, I don't I don't have that luxury. That's that's pretty sweet. Um, one thing talking about the spooks here, the little bees asking if there's a technique to walk in the dog uh, uh, or a frog from a kayak. And, you know, it's very hard to walk the dog in any kind of a boat that's at water level, mm -hmm. especially if you're sitting. You got to be able to stand up. Um, the, the only the only thing I would tell you to little bee on that is you can walk the dog with the spook with your rod tip straight up in the air instead of down. It takes quite a bit of practice to be able to do it mm -hmm. good, but that's about the only way I think you could do it from a kayak without standing. And so when I'm, when I'm walking the dog on my kayak, I'm standing uh, and then you can, you can do it just fine. But if you don't have a stable enough kayak to stand up in, no way, that's not gonna, that ain't gonna work. Um, yeah, you just, it's just practice, really. It's like skipping a bait. There's a lot of people who would think they skip baits well, but if you don't go out and practice it constantly, then, or even just practice, like I, I go to my, of all things, my neighbor will never watch this, so I have no problem admitting this right now. I skip into his drain pool on the side of his pool all the time. Just to practice backhand, forehand, yeah, yeah. whatever it is. Um, I mean, I don't want... I don't want them to know about it, but I don't care if they'll never watch this. So I don't even think they know I have a fishing channel. That's how <laughs> crazy these, these guys uh, are. Well, your chatter, he, your chatter bait comparison video was excellent. I, I really enjoyed watching it. Yeah, there was a lot of work in that one, man. There was a lot of work. Yeah. I actually have, I have one for Stealth Blade for Z, the Jackhammer that I've been mm. trying to finish up. Um, so you can Sweet. see the start the startup speeds and what the real the real big differences between those two baits are and crazy enough i think the stealth blade starts faster than the jackhammer and that's crazy to me wow well old brett height uh sure did a heck of a job selling it here on the last tournament yeah uh, you know he he just whacked them on that thing yeah he he that first day of the Major League Fishing. I think he had like 80 pounds with him. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he and, flat. And, and and to think that he was fishing like just, he killed, man. Yeah, he basically found a grassy spot that was kind of isolated. And he said the fish were just stacked up on that thing. And I, uh, I have one of those spots out there. Yeah, that's fun stuff, isn't it? So that's pretty much what I got going on. What do you got? What do you got going on yours, your channel? I, I had, I don't even know where the folder is now. I had the folder open. I actually did, a, I, I don't know if I'll upload it anytime soon, but I did a video over the weekend about subscription tackle boxes. Like, I, I have had a lot of emails lately about people saying, oh, I, I watched your subscription tackle box and it helped, it helped me for my my husband or my uncle or whoever it was. Yeah. And then I got another email the next day saying, thank goodness I, I watched it because they were going to go and subscribe to real tackle box. And I was like, Oh my gosh, please don't do that. Please don't go do that. Don't go down that road. You'll lose money. And cause that real tackle box is really not, they haven't sent anybody, any boxes. They keep collecting money and not doing, doing it. And that hurts the industry. So I thought, 
I'm going to put that out right off the bat and then go from there. And then I, I actually put together like three or four or five, three or four trips of me going fishing with Topwater Johnny into one video. So there's a video of just me bass fishing. So that might be cool. One of those two is going to go up this weekend. I would imagine I've got a lot of them. I've got a lot of stuff done. Um, but I haven't, you know, it's, you know, you know how it is. I, I do three videos yeah. a week. So yeah, yeah. I could do more, but I've you know. got a lot of boxes coming in here in the next week or so. And I think I might do a comparison video of all of them. Yeah, that would be good. I'd like to, I'd like to watch that. And I got stuff this week. Chase Bates sent me. Literally. I, I, uh, I've been throwing that Chase Bates. Uh, they call it the curly tail. It's a four inch grub. That's a pretty nice bait, uh, the man. Curly bait. Sweet. Yeah, the curly yeah. bait. Is that yeah, it? Yeah, that one. Yeah, I've been putting that on the back of a chatterbait, man, and it's it's been slaying them. Look at this one. This one, I, I, I I'm I actually am looking forward. To, uh, let me take it out. I'm actually looking forward to this one. This one has is supposed to be a swim bait. Holy cow, that was tough to open. But look at the the tail on it. It has those. Oh yeah, it's but, like the squid. It's got like the squid tail on it. I don't know squid, if you can see, you squid. see the, the texture yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah. So it's really, I really think it's going to move really well in the water. That's crazy. The key word to that whole sentence, though. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, the guys at Chase Baits are. I've had I. They were on the show several times. So when something <clears throat> new comes out, usually. They send it over. So yeah, they they sent. Oh god! So uh, speaking of yeah. speaking of uh, monthly tackle boxes, have you seen this uh, competition that uh, Mystery Tackle Box is doing with the? Uh, uh, what do they call that thing? It's it's. Uh, let's see. I pulled it up because the. It's called. I think it's called on the line or something. Become the next great influencer and they've selected like i don't know 10 10 uh youtubers or something and they're all competing against each other so this is crazy somebody asked me just to to do that oh, somebody, they? somebody emailed me and said steve you should you should make their video do this and and go try out for with catchco yeah and and i wrote down I'm not joking. I wrote down all these ideas. You know, they had a, a, a Google form you had to fill out and so forth. Well, I, I started filling it out and I got to like, I don't even know what, what it was. And then I went, do I want to do this? <laughs> and I stopped and never completed it and just thought, it's a great, I mean, I think they were giving away like ten or $20,000, maybe it was, something like that. Yeah, I don't know what they're giving away. $10,000. Uh, and, and it, you know, it's it's a, it's a cool thing, but it just, to be honest, I couldn't I couldn't bring myself to do the, even make the video that they wanted. Yeah. I just yeah. thought, uh, you know, Mystery Tackle Box has a decent box, but... I don't want to have to something. That's the truth. Yeah. So. Yep. Yep. What? Right dude, who on. are the ten? Do, can you tell me who the ten people yeah. are? Yeah, I can. Uh, well, they, they actually you wouldn't recognize them because they only give them their first name. Oh. Brandon, Colby, Jay, JJ, Marshall, Michael. Yeah. Uh, if you click on the individual person, then you can see their names. Like I know this Michael guy. His name, he, his channel is called Real Naughty Fishing, and uh, he seems like a pretty good dude. Were did um, they? Was there like a? Did any of them have like a really significant amount of of subscribers? Oh, I haven't checked that. But what they do is they send them this big box, and it's got like five mystery tackle boxes in it. Okay. And then and then like each week they're going to do a challenge. So the first week. They all open the box and it's the same challenge, which is they have to go out and fish and film themselves trying to catch a fish on every lure in the box. That's the first challenge. Okay. Uh, I don't know what next week's challenge is going to be. 
so you can go on their site now and watch the videos of all these guys doing that challenge. And then you're supposed to vote. They, the viewers vote on who they like the best. Oh, okay. Uh, so that's well, how they're going to, that's how they're going to select the person, I guess. Yeah. I wish all of them the best of luck. I mean, it's a great marketing opportunity. That's for sure. Did you, did you know about it before that came out? Uh, I saw something, um, either I did see something that says, Hey, sign up to be the next mm -hmm. catch co influencer. Yes. But I, I, I didn't really pay much attention to it other than that. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I think someone sent me it. I don't know who sent it to me, to be honest, you know, I, I kind of, and maybe I'm wrong t too, but I kind of have in my head kind of a stereotypical idea of the preferred catch co YouTuber. And it's more like a Guggen guy. And I'm not, yeah. I'm not one of those. I, that's not me. I don't, I don't know how I could impress them just being me, you know? Yeah. That's, and I, and I don't want to be something I'm not. Yeah. You don't want to be fake. Yeah. I, you don't, and you don't want to use clickbait and all the other stuff that they do. I mean, Thomas yeah. and I watch this, this channel that's a, uh, a car channel. And the amount of clickbait that this channel puts up, and they got like almost 3 million subscribers. Yeah. And, but the, the clickbait that they use, I mean, you'll go through the whole video and you'll be like, why would they even use this as a title? Yeah, they never even. One time. And, and it just it irritates the crap out of me. I know yeah. you, it, unfortunately, that's what people click on. Like you and I talked about it. Yeah. The, the amount of, uh, like I started doing these minute videos for shorts. <clears throat> My son watches these shorts nonstop. Um, but the amount of traffic that comes off these shorts is <clears throat> unbelievable. I mean, it's unbelievable. Um, but what can you, it's, it, other than me showing me catching fish, it's really hard to do a minute video and go, okay, I'm going to explain a closer look of this video in a minute. It, it yeah. just, it, it's hard for me to do. Yeah. TikToks are the same way, but I did hear that TikTok is going to have a version where you can go up to three minutes at oh. some point. In three minutes, I could do a lot in three minutes. A minute's really hard though. Yeah. Uh, three. I mean, a minute goes by really, really fast. Yeah, yeah, and, and and I'm and I'm putting them together and then editing them down so I have what I want in there. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm doing too. So um, you know, it, it's tough. It is tough. Okay. Uh, the that's only it. other thing I thought I'd mention is Monster Bass is doing something that I think is kind of cool too, and that's uh, they're doing this national tournament where they're. Uh, you don't have to be a subscriber, but if you are a subscriber, you get a free code and you get to sign up for, you can sign up for the tournament. If you aren't a subscriber, you pay 10 bucks and you're signed up for the tournament. And they're doing this entire, they're doing it for an entire year. The entire year you can, you can sign up on one of these, uh, it's called the Fishing Chaos app, which is kind of like the uh, the other app that they that they use for tournaments, uh, Tourney X. You sign up for that app, and then you you sign up for this tournament. And literally, anytime you catch a fish, you can load it on the app, and uh, all year long they're going to be giving away prizes. So you could literally just every time you catch a fish, you could load it if you want it, and you might win a prize if you're. They're giving prizes for the biggest fish, the smallest fish, all kinds of other fish things. And uh, some of their prizes are pretty, pretty awesome. I mean, we have a, we have a thing down here called trophy catch. So yeah, I've you, heard of that. You sign up and then any, and now you have to have an eight pound fish, but any Jeez. fish over eight pounds, you get like, you know, a $50 gift certificate, the Bass Pro or a hundred dollar gift certificate and all this other stuff. It, it it's un it's unbelievable. They have it in Texas too, and and then we have um, the CCA does a whole thing uh, for saltwater fishermen and stuff like that, where they give away boats and out and Yamaha motors and I mean cars and trucks and everything and and you know if you it, but it's all tagged redfish or tagged uh, mahi mahi and. Yeah, all this other stuff, but it, it, you have it to catch tag fish. fish then. Say that again. You have to catch tag fish then. Yeah, yeah, you got. Yeah, see. but they release like twenty five or thirty, and they kind of give you hints where where you should go. 
Yeah. I should mention one of the comments I was laughing at. Uh, NRO, you know, Tony said, "Can you imagine me saying anything in less than three minutes?" And I have to say, no, I can't imagine <laughs> you doing it, Tony, at <laughs> all in three minutes. But Tony has the best vernacular of all of us. That guy is, is crazy smart. So. I watch his videos and I'm always like, I, it would take me three minutes just to look up some of the shit he says. I got to look up words <laughs> in the middle of his videos. I'm like, oh, what does this mean? Uh, sorry, it's funny. That's funny. All right. So should we jump in? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, you know, I think the first question we ought to ask, um, although you could start with a, a lot of different things, but I, I started thinking to myself, a brand new fisherman, first day, first day on the water. Um, not if he's not going to throw a night crawler, you know, not, not going to throw a minnow, something mm -hmm. live. Yeah. Uh, what is the first bait you would recommend? Number one, the very first bait you would recommend to a brand new fisherman to be wants to learn to be a bass fisherman or fisherwoman. What's your first bait? What would I you would do? actually say. A spinnerbait. Spinnerbait. Now, and, okay. and the only reason I would say that is because it's, and I mean no disrespect, it's stupid proof. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, a, like someone said, a plastic worm would probably be my second one. It'd be a really mm -hmm. close second. Mm -hmm. um, the the thing is, you want people when people go fishing when you, when they get out there and hopefully they they know how to tie a proper knot to start off with. That would be yeah. the first thing. Like, this is crazy. Uh, my dad and my, I think he's, I guess I can consider him my step brother-in-law. I don't even know how he's related to me now mm -hmm. that I think about it. <clears throat> they are going fishing. And my dad said, well, I went out and bought a great rod. And he's like, you need to bring over a reel for me. And I'm like, well, wh where did you get your rod first off? And he's like, well, I got it <laughs> off Amazon. And I'm like, what? Uh-oh. What are you uh -oh. talking about? And he's like, well, I got it for $69. And I'm like, okay, gee, what is going on here? Do you not know what I do for a living? And then, <laughs> and then I brought him over a, uh, a, a Shimano Sustain is his reel. Holy cow. <laughs> so, uh, oh, my goodness. That's a that's a waste, man. I Give it a Sustain to someone. Okay, so oh, to be brutally honest, it was the only reel I had that was brand new at the time. I got two new ones since then, but I'm oh, sorry. Uh, but uh, it was the only one I had that I had. But the first thing I said to him is, you need to learn how to tie a proper knot before you go do anything. And then I sa he said, well, I'm going to, I think I can do all the stuff you do, obviously, which irritates the hell out of me. <laughs> um, and uh, But I said to him, you know, get yourself a couple spinner baits. If you guys are going bass fishing, Make sure you can tie a thing on because bass will eat a spinnerbait almost anywhere, any time of the year. Uh, in this case, we are having our bluegill spawn right now. I mean, physically, right now. Mm -hmm. So I thought, if you're going to do it, a spinnerbait is not a bad option. Now, what would you? What would be your first suggestion? Okay, uh, just FYI for any of you who don't know, uh, Shimano sustained spinning reel on Tackle Warehouse is three hundred and nine dollars. Three hundred and nine bucks. We're talking entry level, brand new fisherman. And uh, it was the only one I had, man. On his sixty nine dollars, oh, you're bucks. already off the rails. <laughs> on his sixty nine uh, reel, you should have seen this piece of junk rod he had. And I, I can tell you right now, he was not getting a rod from me. If he would have asked, I would have given it to him, but he didn't. All right, I here here is my first lure that I would that I would recommend. A worm, a, a, a ribbon tail worm. worm. Yes, a seven inch ribbon tail worm. And this Berkeley Power Bait's a great worm. Yum also makes a great ribbon tail worm. Just about every company. Charlie's Worms makes them. Cream Lures makes them. Everybody makes them, right? But to me, uh, I do have a spinnerbait on my list, by the way. It's in my it's in my top group of, uh, as as a moving bait, uh, a moving lure, I, I, would, I would definitely recommend the spinnerbait as well. But I think if you're talking about the very first lure, uh, a, a, a 
a ribbon tail worm or a curly tail worm, whatever you want to call it, is kind of idiot proof as well. Mm -hmm. And the problem with, I have Cinco on my list as well. I saw a lot of guys saying a Cinco, but the problem in my mind with a Cinco is that if you go out with a brand new fisher, someone who's never fished, what they're going to do is they're going, if they can figure out how to cast, they're going to cast the lure out and they are immediately just going to retrieve it. Mm -hmm. They are not, and, and that's all they think. They think that's all fishing is, is you throw your bait out there and then you just reel it back in. Well, the beauty of a, a ribbon tail worm is that you can do that. Yeah, you can you can just crank and wind a ribbon tail worm, and it's going to get bit. Mm -hmm. And then, as they get a little more experience and they learn how you know to let it sink and to hop it and, uh, and twitch it and do the, all these other kind of things, uh, the worm just becomes more and more versatile. Uh, so, on in my mind, uh, the other thing is a brand new fisherman almost always is going to start with a spinning reel. They're not going to start with a bait caster. It's yeah. super complicated to figure that out. And <clears throat> retrieving a worm on a spinning reel just works. You know, it 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 works. So, for me, that's that that would be the first bait I would recommend. Um, but I don't disagree with the spinner bait either. Uh, when you're talking about a search bait, hey, how can you beat a spinner bait? Yeah. In fact, in fact, I thought I might even recommend, you know, a smaller spinner bait, like even a crappie size spinner bait. Strike King makes one called uh, a yeah. spinner bait or something like that. And uh, the beauty of a small spinner bait is uh, you could possibly catch some crappie or bluegill or something like that mm -hmm. at, at the same time, which would keep them interested, you know? Yes. One of the bad things about bass fishing is sometimes some people, a couple of people commented on here, I think slow, boring, you know, it, it can get, and especially if you're trying to teach a kid, you want them to, you want to, you want something to happen quick for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if the conditions are right, of course, a spinner bait's awesome and amazing and great, but ribbon tail worm would be my first. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's just kind of go through. Uh, uh, I've got about seven techniques here that I think I would recommend to a brand new person. And when I thought about this, I'd be curious to see what you you think. Uh, you you obviously want to keep it simple. Yes. Um, seven techniques is too many. Simple, stupid. Kiss. Se yeah, exactly. Seven techniques is too many, really, for a new person. I would say only two or three, probably getting them started. Yeah. But I started to ask myself questions like, well, they probably ought to have a topwater. Even though a topwater is not the first thing I'd recommend, there are times of the day when the only thing that's going to work is a topwater. So they ought to, you ought to throw a topwater out there as part of one of your, your techniques. And then I started thinking, well, what kind of a topwater would I throw? And, and I think I would recommend a brand new person to throw a whopper plopper. I agree. And not on my it, list, but whopper plopper is easy. Yeah, that's why it's easy. It's, same, yes. it's the same principle. You just chuck it out there and you retrieve it. That's all you do. Um, the, the, so many of the other top waters require you, they require some action. You know, they require you walking the dog or they require you popping it or twitching it or, and you can really mess that up for a while until you figure it out. And, and, uh, you know, Dean's here says a jitterbug. A jitterbug would be another good one. Uh, you know, very simple. In fact, a jitterbug would actually probably be better for a spinning spinning setup because uh, it's incredibly light. But same thing, you just retrieve it. And you know, on ponds, a jitterbug's just going to tear them up. It's 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 a really good lure. So, what what would be your top water bait? So I didn't I didn't really have a top water, but I had okay. one of the things I I had. The spinner bait, and I, of all things, I have a, a small spinner bait is what I put down there. Hmm. But my next one was like a big easy gambler, the gambler big easy, like a oh. a swim, a plastic swim bait. Well, and, hmm. and the more I the more I thought about this, is the one problem with a a plastic swim bait is the rigging of the plastic swim bait. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but maybe you mess up one to start off with, and then. You know, it's one of those, it's another one that's just, you just cast and you can just reel it in. 
and get, it gets enough action that you will get you'll get bites. Um, years ago, I remember when uh, Patrick Spiel came out with the what was his jointed swim bait called? Uh, I don't even know what it's called right off the top of my head. The Magic Swimmer. Oh my gosh! And when it came out, it was just. I remember seeing it 10 years ago in the water and going, oh my gosh, that's a rot that's a real bait. That's a real fish. And then I used to tell Patrick all the time, the greatest thing about that lure was it was so stupid to use because you could just, if you knew how to tie the right knot, uh -huh. all you do is cast it and it swam perfectly back in. Now they don't make, I don't know if they make those magic swimmers anymore for Sabeel anymore now that he's not with pure fishing. So um, but it's, it's, it's one of those, that's why I said that big easy from gambler is, is perfect. It's got a, that thumper tail and it just, it just paddle thump, 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 thump. And that attracts fish. So well, I yeah. had the same mindset. I felt like they ought to have some sort of a swim bait type lure, a, yeah. a, a, a big easy to me is too big to tell you the truth for a newbie. But my thought was. I had two ideas on a swim bait type lure. And the first one I think is the one I would recommend first. And that is uh, a single tail grub. Mm -hmm. And, and the reason being uh, here, here's one, this is another power bait. I'm, I'm not trying to push the power bait stuff, but a grub that's uh, four or five inches uh, in size, you can put this on a ball head jig it's super easy to fish and jigs flat or uh, uh, um, grubs, curly tail grubs just flat out attract fish. They catch fish, they're fish catchers. And you fish it the same way you do a swim bait. So when I was thinking about the swim bait, I thought, you know, I would probably recommend the grub first. And then uh, over time, then I'd probably go to like the little dipper. Uh, yeah. You know, it, yes. it's a, that bait's it's, amazing. It's a great bait and it's small. You could put this on a ball head jig as well. And you don't have to worry. My reflection is terrible. You don't have to worry about trying to figure out, you know, belly weighted hooks or anything like that. You just put it on a ball head jig, just like you would um, that grub. And that, and that little guy is going to, it's going to do some magical things. Yeah. And when they're on this, you don't want to throw anything else anyway. It's just so much fun to fish. Yeah. So, and it keeps uh, everybody interested. The swim bait, that kind of swim bait, even I think I put e big easy, but they, it's, I think I was trying to think of the regular easy swimmer. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, the, the big easy is like five inches long. Yeah. It, it's pretty beefy. But that, but the, the one you had right there, the reaction innovation skinny dipper is, yeah. I, I told you, I think that is, a gold lure. I I, I, think. I think there's nothing, nothing wrong with that lure. I have no joke bags and bags of those things. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I love the skinny dippers. You know, the other thing that I was thinking about with this uh, grub is that um, when, uh, when the person starts to actually get a little more experienced and they say to themselves, Man, I want to put a trailer on that spinner bait. Mm -hmm. This would this could double as a spinner bait, and because the other thing I, I've learned, I, I've made this mistake before with new new people like my nephews and other other people. I end up giving them like forty different bags of lures, and they don't use hardly any of them. They just they just gravitate to one or two, and, and all these others just kind of overwhelm them, and and and. So I think if you can find something like that grub where you could swim it your, on its own, you could use it as a trailer. It's kind of a multi-purpose lure. And then uh, maybe they'll actually use the thing. So anyway, that's just a thought. Uh, but swim baits, swim baits you can't, uh, you can't go wrong with, with any kind of a swimming soft plastic lure for sure. Yeah, yeah, I agree completely. Um, so I had spinner bait, small spinner bait. I had the swim bait. I had, of course, cause I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And, but I think figuring out how to teaching somebody how to correctly use a wacky rig worm. I don't think, I think when I, when, when I was teaching Thomas how to fish, 
it was the first way I told him. I said, look, we're going to learn how to, you're going to learn how to whack a fish with a wacky rig or a Texas rigged eight inch worm. Um, because that's they get bites everywhere. Yeah. Um, but you know, that's interesting. You say that because I, I absolutely totally agree. Uh, wacky rig. There's just something about that rig that really attracts bass. If you know where the bass are at and you can throw it at them. But I, I haven't had, that great of luck teaching people with the wacky rig. They, they, they want to work it too fast. They want to, the same thing they want to chuck and wind, you know, and that's why I kind of went with the ribbon tail worm because you can Texas rig a, a, a ribbon tail worm and then they can just do whatever they want. Yeah. But, but absolutely at some point they need to learn that wacky rig because how can you go, how can you, how can you ignore the wacky rig? Yeah. You know? I mean, uh, I mean, if you're going, if, if like, if I were to say to somebody, there, there would be, the, the, you're starting off, here's, first off, you need to learn how to tie a Palomar knot. You need to, you need to learn your knots before anything. Okay, so let's, let's talk about that for a second, because you're absolutely right. Um, if you're going to learn to fish and you want to fish, you've got to learn some knots. However, yeah. knot tying can be incredibly overwhelming. <laughs> Yes. Uh, just like the Palomar. The Palomar is an easy knot to tie, but at first it seems pretty complicated. All right, if you were to say, why don't we ask this question? What is the single knot of choice that you would try to teach a new young fisherman? Is it the Palomar, the knot you would go with? For me, it would be. Now, okay. and now this is just for, for me. Like in all the hundreds, I mean, I've probably interviewed 300 people, um, maybe even four or 500 people. All the people that I've ever, that are always like way beyond exceptional. I'm talking that you might never know about this person, Andy Mill, the uh, George Poveromos, the, the, these guys that are just unbelievable anglers. I mean, Lefty Cray, everybody. <laughs> The one thing that most of these guys do better than all of us is they are meticulous about the knot they tie. Yep, absolutely. They're and I'm not I'm not joking. They're meticulous. If they think that they t and I'm this way too. Like um, Mike, my buddy Mike that owns tackle webs. He every time I go fishing with him, if I bring him a pole, the first thing he does, he cuts my knot free and ties his own knot. Because he's like, it's not that I don't trust your knot, <laughs> but I know how to do it. I know what I want to do, and I want to do this my, my way. So even I do, like I would before I go fishing. If I don't think I have my pile on my knot correct, I cut it off and retie. Yeah, I think the thing with a, a Palomar knot is you can tie it correctly and still be wrong. Yes. And, uh, and it will fail on you. And that's why I probably would not recommend the Palomar to a brand new person. It looks like most people in the comments are saying the improved clinch, not the improved clinch, not. Yeah. And that, and that's not a bad one at all either. My personal choice is, is the uni knot. I, I just think the uni knot is super easy to tie and it, it's really hard to mess it up and it, it, it rarely fails, but the Palomar knot is actually an incredibly strong knot if you tie it correctly. Um, but uh, the, con the 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 chat group here probably has the right idea that the improved clinch knot. If you're just looking for one basic simple knot, yeah, for, for a simple, kid to learn, uh, that's probably has a lot to do with it. But you, I think, at some point in time when you get past that and you start to become a little bit more experienced angler you need to you need to tie the knots that you're comfortable with and that don't that that you know that work like if i were to do like i got this new frog i don't even know what it's called i get it came in today it's called it's from prototype lures just i don't know anything about these guys it's called the smasher frog now i wouldn't I wouldn't technically use a Palomar knot to tie this this on. I would use yep. a loop knot because I want the 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 uh, the lure to have just a little bit more action when it 
pauses. Mm -hmm. So a Palomar knot, while it will work perfectly great with a worm or whatever, if I need that bait that's on the top of the water, I need a little bit more action, a little more freedom, I tie a loop knot. But I would never, ever, ever recommend a newbie try to tie uh, a loop knot to start off with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, they would be completely confused. I mean, like I said, my I, my dad used to fish with me when I was younger. And we used to do a, a cinch knot for everything. But I, when he started doing all this stuff and he said he was going to go fishing with, um, with Billy and stuff, I was like, uh, you know, dad, before you go, because you're not suck, you should learn how to tie a Palomar knot because yeah. you've lost way too many fish on the, the stupid knot you think is working that really doesn't work anymore. You know, okay. he probably does like some, you know, I don't even know. It would, I don't even think I'd call it a cinch knot, to be honest. It's a horrible knot. Yeah. Um, it, it's interesting, too. If you just take the time to learn a knot, once you learn it, even the complicated knots are not that difficult. Yeah. Um, but but there is a learning curve. Uh, and and I, I guess it depends on how eager a person is to actually force themselves to learn it. Yeah. Like the, the, the loop knot, I, the only reason I also use a loop knot is that the knot faces backwards. So if I were to take, let me get this stupid lure out. So when I tie this one, of course, look, look what just happened here. What a terrible box. The box just fell apart. <laughs> oh, man. That's not a good sign, is it? No, no. So if you, I tied it here. When I tie the knot, the line, the line, the extra line faces backwards. Mm -hmm. So then when you're fishing it, you don't get as much grass and crap on the front of your thing. If it was facing mm. forward like this, yeah, yeah. The, the, it's going to tie, it's going to get, it's going to, you're going to catch weeds right there. So there's little things that you, you know, you need to learn when you, when you make that next step into, into fish and when you start fishing and that's when things become even more fun to be honest. Um, so, you know, Knots are, knots are really important. But they I would agree. Important. The, the cinch knots probably, probably the easiest and the way to go. Okay, so now that we've uh, we've settled the knot question, uh, this uh, this the natural segue is line. What type of line should a newbie start with? Um, there's basically only four types of line uh, that I'm aware of. You got your braid, you got your fluorocarbon, you got your mono, and you got the copolymer. Uh, what, what's, what's, what's everybody say there is, does the line matter that they start with? Um, what do you think, Steve? I'm, I'm all braid. That's all braid. I really? think the, pro the one problem with, <clears throat> I think mono is really, really good to use. But the problem with mono is unless they get their line, their reel spooled from somebody who knows how to spool a reel, they're going to probably do it backwards. And then the first cast is going to be an asp wad of terribleness. <laughs> and they can put those up and just create a bird nest in the front yard of my house if you want to. <laughs> so even if you're not in a bait caster, if you tie that mono in because it has so much memory. Yeah. That's the one thing that I don't like about mono, but like you're said, definitely going to get a lot of line twist. Yes, line twists make me crazy, and especially down here for us, braid is just more for for me. We have so much weeds and and stuff like that. Braid yeah. is braid is king. Yeah, I'm I, I'm going to disagree with you. Now, on this one. having said that, a lot of people use fluorocarbon for that. You know, so they don't see it. But my, right, I told my dad, right. I, I, my dad got, I don't even know, a 300. Now here's, add up this. I gave him a 300 yard spool of Power Pro, 12 pound two for the, yeah. that reel. Well, you may as well if you're giving him a $300 reel. I mean, my, might as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, I definitely agree with you that uh, you're going to have way more line twist with mono or fluoro than you are with braid. But I still think that a newbie should start with mono. And the main reason, I think, is just price. Oh, uh, I agree with you. You know, you can get big game trialing uh, uh, brand. Some of these brands, you know, you can get a, an a, a entire spool for seven, eight bucks, you know, five, six bucks. I mean, it, it's cheap, cheap stuff. Uh, yeah, something like that. This is going to you, by the way. 
Oh, sweet. This is Perfect. in your box. Awesome. I sent this to you too. Send in this. Oh yeah. Nice. Did you did you ask for this? I don't I think know. I did ask for yeah. some of that. Your box yeah. is sitting right here. Perfect. Anyway, the, the, uh, the, I think the first thing it's got to be cheap because they are going to screw that up so much. It doesn't matter what they're throwing, whether it's, I mean, uh, and your part of the world, you know, your water's super dirty. So you could probably just tie your lure straight to braid and be fine. You can't do that up here where I live. You can't do that in a lot of parts of the world. Yeah. Uh, you've got to have a transparent line or semi-transparent line. And to me, I think until you get good, mono makes the most sense just because it's so cheap. Yeah. And there are, you know, mono has gotten way better than it used to be. Yes. And uh, it, it, if, if you get it spooled on correctly on a spinning reel, the line twist is bearable. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, a lot of newbies aren't even going to use a spinning reel. They're going to use uh, a, a spin, a spin cast reel, like a Zebco 33 or whatever. Yeah. And uh, so mono works fine with yeah. that. It's, it's funny. Cause when you start talking about you, when you start talking about mono versus braid, there's, you know, you have your pros and cons to each. Um, but I know I, you know, for me, it's just, it's convenient. And, and like you said, you said it perfect down here. We have, we have stained, stained water. So your, you, I tie everything directly to my lures directly to braid. Now, when I go saltwater fishing, completely different situation. I braid and then a much longer leader and mm -hmm. fluoro. But that's just, you know, because they you're in clear water and that kind of stuff. But, you know, I, I when I, years ago, I saw Boyd Duckett um, at Lake Okeechobee. He was trying to get his weight, win his way into one of the classics. And it was a, like this golden ticket. You won this tournament. You got to go to the classic, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember seeing Boyd, and he had a giant Sharpie marker. And he would take his marker, and he would write or mar mark his braid yeah. up yeah. 20 or 30 feet with mm -hmm. with the Sharpie marker uh, and yeah. make it black. Yeah. And I, and I remember seeing him doing that. I, I went over to him, like, dude, what are you doing? He's like, I can't believe you co you fish down here and you don't do that. I'm like, uh, it, is it necessary? And he's like, it makes it vanish. It vanishes. Mm -hmm. And uh, ever since then, I do it when I'm really targeting like giant fish. Yeah. I mean, I'm always targeting giant fish, but it doesn't mean I'm going to catch them. But you know what I mean. Do you know uh, in some tackle stores, you can actually buy a Sharpie that has a cut in the yes. tip of the mark so that it's made to slide up and down braid. Yeah, mine, I, I wasn't going to show that one, but I have one sitting right yeah. there that, that yeah, I, that I use that and I use that. And I've also seen guys just cut a slit into their, into their Sharpie with a knife. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty messy though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it works. It really, it's one of those, I mean, I, I actually thought we do a beginner's thing. And then I thought there at some point in time we do in more advanced, like yeah. class on this. And that was one mm -hmm. of the secrets I was going to, I was going to say. Oh, sweet. Well, you know, uh, this is an interesting, what booster's talking about for a beginner spin cast, still have originals up with user, user 55 years old. This reminds me of a co-angler that I knew of. I didn't know him personally, but I, I was told about it by some other pros that, uh, he was an older guy and all he fished with was the Zebco 33 or the Zebco 202. And he would literally, uh, he had one rod, one reel, and he would literally go and fish these tournaments as a co-angler. And he actually competed really well with, with that. You know, uh, you don't necessarily have to have the uh, Shimano sustains uh, <laughs> to actually catch fish. The fish do oh. not care about the equipment at all. Uh, but uh, it, it is interesting uh, how... A lot of it is your just your mindset, and if you just make up your mind, like uh, the guy who owns Patagonia, um, don't know the guy's name, but I heard an interview with him. He's kind of an eccentric eccentric dude, and he is a fly fisherman. And he decided to do an experiment for an entire year. He used I don't know what the technique's called because I'm not a fly fisherman. You might know, but what it is is it's a single pole 
with no with no reel and uh, a, a piece of line. I don't know how long the line is that's attached to this pole. And he used the same exact fly. He only used one fly for an entire year using this, what he calls a primitive way of fishing with a, a single long, like a bam, it's not bamboo, but it's picture a long bamboo pole with, with a, a long piece of line on it. And he tra he's traveled all over the world fishing just this one technique. And he, and he says he's had success everywhere he goes. And he's really, it's, he says it's forced him to be a much better fisherman because he has no other options. This is the only option he has to fish with. And it's been like this year long experiment for him. And that really intrigued me. It lights, it light, lit me up. I was like, man, that is, I mean, I wouldn't do that because I, you know, I got to have my 32 different rods and reels, but it, it does sound intriguing uh, to kind of put yourself through that. So I, I, when I go fishing, I am the most, simplistic person to fish with that's this is the god's honest truth i bring one or two rods there are you know ready to go and i don't bring any extra crap i make up my mind the night before here's how i'm going to fish tomorrow here's here's the game plan and i don't i don't i try not to steer away from it if i put on a if i put on a uh, a buka baby bull shad that we both agree on or if i put on yeah, a yeah. chatterbait whatever that's what I'm using. I don't need to have all 25 rods that I have. I probably don't have 25 rods, but I, pro I probably have 15 rods. I don't, I don't bring all those with me because it just, I think, I think you can catch fish any way you want to catch fish. Yeah. But yeah. when you start overthinking how to fish, that's when you start making mistakes and, you don't become confident in what you're doing. You're you're constantly changing. Like I, I hate to say this, but like the in the video that I'm going to post about me fishing, I talk about how when I go down the bank this way, I'm going to fish one way all the way down. I'm going to use a stealth blade, and when I get all the way at the end of the corner, I'm going to switch and go all the way back with a worm, and hmm. and either I'm going to catch fish using the jackhammer or the stealth blade on the way back uh, out. Or I know I'm going to catch fish once I start make that turn and, and start fishing with the worm. And I mean, you know, the only thing that I put in my pockets, I put a, a pair of pliers and two or three extra wacky rigged worms that are ready to go, and that's it. And I, I, I don't, I don't change. But I know everyone. Like you see all these pros, they got thirty rods on the front of their boat. There's a, you know, when you're probably when you're fishing for a hundred thousand dollars. You know, if you if the fish bites or isn't biting one thing, and you you need to be prepared. But us normal average Joe anglers, sometimes we get convoluted with all those that stuff and all the new fancy crazy stuff. Yep. Uh, as I do jazz hands, and and you you sometimes you overthink the the fishing process, and it hurts you, in my opinion. No doubt, no doubt. I I think that's very very true. Um, it, it it's uh. It, it is interesting to, to think about, you know, Ned Cady, who is the Ned rig. He's the guy who created the Ned rig. Mm -hmm. um, he fishes with old, old school rods. They're like five foot long and they're like old Mitchell reels. And I mean, there, there is old and they're antiques and yeah. he still just fishes with the same old stuff. He's always fished with. And uh, there's a really good video of him out there use, uh, talking about the technique, and he shows you some of his rods, and, and it's just amazing. When I first saw that, I was like, holy cow, I can't believe it. But, you know, he's just a, he's, he's become an expert with that equipment. That's what he's used his whole life, and, he, and he's fantastic with it. And he probably does much better with it than he would with a brand-new Shimano Sustain. I mean, I'm I'm still questioning why I gave it to Dave, my dad. <laughs> I really am. I mean, I don't I don't even the, the only other person that has a sustain in my family is my son, and that even makes even less sense. But that's the right that's the reel that he wanted. So that's what that's a great reel, man. I've got several of them. I love it. Um, for sure. I okay. love mono reels. So so we talked about line. We talked about. Let's get back to, to lures. Yeah. What is your next lure? You you get to go first this time. 
Okay, my next lure is, uh, well, I, I, we, I kind of already mentioned it, the spinner bait, basically. Uh, so let me see if I go. Uh, I, I guess the next one I got on here is a, is a chatter bait. Um, my next one is chatter bait, too. Yeah. Um, I mean, how easy is a chatter bait? Other than, you know, I think, the only, I think the only problem with a chatter bait is selecting the proper trailer for a chatter bait. Yeah. And, and then rigging it right. But... I mean, so you ruin a couple before you get it right. Not that big of a deal. Yep, yep, you're right. Uh, that that is probably, I would say, the only downside to a chatterbait is they get hung up in timber really easy. Mm -hmm. And so, it, you know, you you might think that a person would think this true, but to tell you the truth, they don't. Uh, a, a newbie's just going to chuck it out there and then start reeling it, and, and they don't even realize. Well, you just threw it in the bushes there, that big brush pile. Good luck getting that thing out. Yeah. But if you've got relatively clear stuff, man, the chatterbait is, it's like you said, how can you not use that? How can you not recommend it? It's just easy. It is and, easy. There are times when you've got to, you've got to finesse it a little bit, or, you know, you've got to change up your retrieve and stuff like that, but who cares when you're just starting out? It's a great lure. It really and, is. And really like you go to like a Z man, um, if you go to like a Z man, the original Z man, or, you know, those, yeah. you can get a chatterbait for four bucks, five bucks, four, it might be even three ninety nine at times. Yeah. And you really can't beat a chatterbait. I mean, I don't know. Hank, Hank Snow has a deal with one of them. I don't know the, the name brand right off the top of my head that uh, he uses and, and they're, they make a fantastic, I mean, ridiculous chatter rate. And I think it's like five bucks and, and it makes great noise, has great startup. But I think a chatter bait's one of those baits that you can just, you can tie on and just start throwing it. And if you're, if you're making decent casts and not into the weeds or whatever, and all you got to do, oh, there it is, the Wesley Warbird. All you have to do is just reel it in. I don't think you can beat a chatterbait. Not to mention, um, big fish, big fish eat chatterbaits. I yep. mean, that's that's they the do. one thing. You're right. Tiny fish usually don't uh, go after chatterbaits with a big trailer. They just don't. So you you if, even though you're even though you're you know you're using a bigger bait um, and you're getting maybe less strikes. When you get a strike on a, a chatterbait, it's generally a great bite. Absolutely. Um, and and it they just they just flat out catch fish. They flat out catch fish. You also can tell, you know, even a novice can tell pretty quick when it's not vibrating. Yes. And say, uh oh, I must have grass or there must be something wrong. Yep. Uh so it's a great bait. It really is. And and I I and that, you're right. It catches big fish. It's fun to fish. And you get a kid or, or a new person catching uh, some big fish on a on a chatterbait. They're never going to put that thing down. No. Uh, in fact, my buddy Joe, his son calls it the cheater bait because he and his dad, he and his dad uh, will have these fishing competitions. And whenever his dad breaks out the chatterbait, it's over. You know, he cannot beat him. And he's like, put the cheater bait away. Put the cheater bait away. Do something else. <clears throat> uh, so that's, that's it. Yeah, I, 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 well, it's, it's not. And, and the chatterbait is it's gold at this place. Uh, now, you know, and I, and I tell people like, I was telling you about my buddy, Craig, who's a great, one of the smartest men I've ever met in my life. And he and I go fishing and he can only fish one way. And it makes me mental. I'm like, dude, you've got to change up a little bit. You've got to put a sinko on. Just watch, watch what I'm doing. Or oh, wait a minute, watch Thomas outfish you for the next 30 minutes and just watch what he's doing. Um, but the chatterbait's one, I gave him a chatterbait and I, and I was watching him reel and I'm like, you know, he's reeling in, reeling in, I don't know where he, he, it stopped, the rod tip stopped bouncing. And I'm like, set the hook! <laughs> as loud as possible at him, because the fish was just, you know, just kept 
coming in with the line and he set the hook yeah. and caught the yeah. fish. And I was, he was like, I would have never known that, that, that I had a fish. And so when I tell people, when they start talking about chatterbaits, I constantly say, you don't feel that, that vibration on the top of your rod tip. You need to set the hook. Hook sets are free. Do they it. Are. doesn't matter. But set the hook because that fish is, you've got a fish running with your, 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 uh, your chatterbait. You know, in my opinion too, that's the problem with say something like a Ned rig. Uh, the Ned rig is a great bait and it catches all, I mean, it catches tons of fish, but there are times when you cannot feel that Ned rig bite at all. You have to watch your line. You do. And when you see the line moving and when you see the line moving, you realize I got a bite and you can set the hook. A brand new person would admit, could possibly miss so many fish on that technique. And a lot of techniques like that, that even though they're great fish catching techniques, they may not make sense for a new person until a new person actually gets advanced enough to start doing things like watching their line. Yeah. I have, I have a, a perfect story for about that. That big fish I caught last week. Yeah. So I casted at a, a, it was the first cast on the, with the worm. I casted at a lily pad that was, you know, over to my left. And as I casted, it hit the lily pad and then fell, just went over top of it. Yeah. And my line went boop instantly. <laughs> and I didn't now it because it was still falling down, that bait was still falling down. That bass bass was just sitting like there and it just opened its mouth and, and sucked it in. And because it made that twist, that little jump in the line, I set the hook as soon as that happened mm -hmm. and caught the fish. Now, yeah. Of all things, I did a short video today, mm -hmm. same exact thing happened. It rolled off. A big bass ate it, but the big bass went right into the weeds, and then I pulled the the hook out of its face when it got all stuck. But uh, you're you're a hundred percent right. You need to people need to watch the line when they're fishing certain ways. A Ned rig, wacky rig worm, even yeah. uh, Texas rigged worm. You know they'll pick that bait up by just sucking it in real fast. Yeah, that's and right. You won't feel it because there's slack in your line. So watching your line is very important because it's just that little like this that might happen. And uh, I mean, I, I've done it. I mean, I've done it. I, I talk about it in a video, upcoming video. I, I cast it at this one spot and I took my eyes off my bait and I was looking around because I thought I saw a bear. This is God's honest truth. <laughs> so I'm like, ah. In Florida? Yeah, we have, we have them all over. Really? And, and as I looked back around, I looked like this, and I saw the line over here. And I'm like, how the hell did it get there? And the bass <laughs> had picked up my bait and charged the other yeah. bait. Yeah. Well, then I set the hook, and then I snapped the line. Wow. And it was like, are you joking me? I mean, how did it get from there to there? I mean, I, I did one of these bits. It's like, is that because the bear was several hundred yards away from me? And I'm like, Mm -hmm. Come in my direction, and do I need to worry about this, yeah. or you know, yeah. do I need to run them over with the golf mm -hmm. cart? And I will run that son of a bitch over with the golf cart. <laughs> but I was like, "Where is he?" Mm -hmm. And uh, and like I said, it was it was over. It was it was ninety degrees from me. I'm like, "How the hell did that happen?" Wow! But I set the hook, and and that was, you know, that's what happened. Okay, what's the answer to this question, uh, Steve? Is a trailer on a chatterbait almost mandatory? So I think, in my opinion, if you're using a jackhammer, it's mandatory. If you're using a stealth blade, it's mandatory too. I think if you're using the original chatterbaits and stuff like that, you can get away with not having a trailer. If I'm using a, a chatterbait, it doesn't matter what chatterbait, I'm putting on a trailer 100% of the time. It's just that the, 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 if you can get a grub tail or the blade aid from Smash Tech, <laughs> it adds that little bit more drag that makes the, the bait work and hunt better. Yeah. So yeah. in my opinion, I, I don't throw a chatterbait without one. I mean, there's, when you see my, now I should mention, when you see my closer look videos, there's times I don't put a trailer on it, but I'm usually just going to the spring and I'm really not fishing. I'm just trying to get the action of the lure. Um, but you'll notice like the jackhammer without a trailer acts completely different 
than with a trailer on it. Like a jackhammer will go <laughs> like this and then dart from one side to the other and then get back in line. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when it has a trailer on it, it runs just dead true. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I agree with you. I think a trailer is critical. I, I would never throw, I would never throw a chatter bait without uh, yeah. a trailer. Um, I will I, throw, I will yeah. throw a spinner bait without a trailer. Yeah, I will too. But, but not a chatter bait. Uh, now here's something else he says here that I think is important for a newbie to think about as well as anybody else. He says, I also have the jackhammer I need to use scared to lose it. Mm -hmm. All right. One, there's no point in having a lure that you're not going to throw, uh, you know, uh, because of fear of losing it. I understand when you got a pricey lure, uh, uh, it's, it's worrisome to, to, but come on. Uh, that's what it's all about, you know, and, uh, kind of like Texas Huntsman says here, watch the pros. They throw it into the junk. You're going to have to throw that thing in places where there's always a risk of losing it. And I think you, you go ahead. I was just going to say, and when you do, you do, it's, it's just, uh, it, it's part of fishing. And when you're new, you're going to lose them a whole lot more <laughs> too. So Never buy just one bait. Uh, <laughs> you know, if, if, I guess you could buy one as an experiment. Yeah. But, but you know, if, if you know, like you and I, we love chatter baits. We're going to throw chatter baits. We know chatter baits work. I'm never coming to the lake with just one mm -hmm. because you're going to lose them. It's, it's inevitable. It's part of fishing. And hey, that's how we keep our tackle companies in business anyway. I, I agree completely. I have this theory. If you're scared to throw it, you shouldn't own it. Because if you're scared to throw it, you're gonna at, you're not gonna cast it where it needs to go. You're not gonna skip it where it needs to be skipped. That kind of stuff. If you're that worried about it, then use something else because um, you're not gonna fish it the way it should be fished. Um, right. And I I mean I'll be honest. I have lost probably more jackhammers than the average person. That's the God's honest truth. I've lost mm -hmm. them off big fish. I've lost them off of, uh, you know, the truth be told, I've lost them on a, the three Christmas trees I put in a certain pond. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that I, you know, I think are deeper, you know, that I'm going to run over top of them and then end up snagging them and then at breaking. Uh, I don't want to say that too loud, but I, and I, I mean, I've lost, I mean, I got that, I got a stealth blade months and months before they were released. I got one and I lost it <laughs> the same day <laughs> that I got it. And I was I was horrified. And I I I'll be uh, truth be told, I was I was afraid to tell Joey that I from Z Man that I lost it. I really was. I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I didn't take <laughs> any pictures of it, but I, I slayed them that day, but it got caught in my Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. and, you know? Now, one strategy, one strategy that uh, you can use if you're trying to save money, let's say, let's say you've got one jackhammer, we'll buy three or four regular $4 chatter baits yep. and go out to the lake and mix it up, you know, and then you, you, you decrease the odds of losing that one jackhammer. So maybe you have two rods, one with a jackhammer, one with a cheap chatter bait, and you cast 10 times with a jackhammer. 20 times with the chatterbait mm -hmm. and, and, and then out of the 30 casts, only 10, only 30% of your casts are, are, are you're possibly going to lose the expensive lure. Uh, that, that's, that's an idea. But, yeah. uh, uh, the other thing is, you know, maybe I think a chatterbait's a must. I mean, I think a chatter, chatterbait's a must for an advanced angler. I do too. I do too. That's a great lure. Great yeah. lure. Um, let's see. I had another thought come to me while you're talking about, it. Oh, okay. But what we, we're kind of breaking million in and out. Christmas tree, John Gill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How was, many, how many dollars worth of lures are hanging on that Christmas tree? At least uh, 20. Yeah. And not just chatterbaits. Yeah. Like, all right. Somebody yeah. needs to get some scuba gear and go down and retrieve it. Yeah. <laughs> And, okay, so I'm going to be really, really honest. That jet, that stealth blade, I actually thought about. It was hung up, 
And I thought to myself, screw this. I'm going in the water. It was in the, it was in the middle of the cold months here. And I'm like, I'm doing it. I don't even care. I can't lose this lure. I started stripping down into the undies. And that's a, that's a sight nobody wants to see. And, and that's like a, 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 a fat, naked, <laughs> you know, never seen the sun in his life, you know, white man. And, yeah. and, and I thought, I'm going in that water and going after it. And then, uh, and then I, I pulled it tight and then out of nowhere, it, it, I actually thought I got it through. And I'm like, oh, I got all happy. And then I'm like, oh, no. And I'm like, <laughs> why did I put those Christmas trees there? But I mean, I've caught some giants off those Christmas trees. So what you need is a buddy like my buddy Rob. Uh, I don't get Rob to go out with me very often because he lives two hours away. But Rob is one of these guys who uh, no holds barred, does not care at all. And if I get a lure hung up, he'll jump in, swim out there, retrieve it for me, and then bring it back. That's the kind of buddy, fishing buddy you need. Uh, I, Rob, I just hung up my jackhammer. He's in. Yeah, He'll dive in and go, <laughs> go get it for you. Uh because I'm just going to break it off. I'm not going to swim in to retrieve it. But uh. I, I mean, if I'm really going to be 100% honest, I, I actually, this this pond, I've, I've caught a ton of fish, ton of giants on this. But the, the pond water, um, like two years ago, gave me a infection that, like, was, it was scary. Really? It was really scary. And, and my wife, is a you know works for the hospital is the best way to put it and i was hiding that that infection from her because i was like oh my gosh it's gotten bad and it got green and then it got black and then it went from like like this big to like this big on my leg and then oh uh, my god and then i had to get it scraped off so in the midst of that that stealth blade all i could think is i'm gonna have infections all over my body and i'm gonna I'm, I, and i'm thinking is it really worth it? i mean how much could that lure be i mean i don't know if i'm not supposed to have to return it back but i know it's one of the original samples that z-man was making and i was like uh, do i really I, I was and i was like this could i could really get sick from this and then oh, wow. it, it kind of pulled so yeah I that's, lose it, though. that's for sure uh, you're right, uh, the little B. I need to bring Rob when I'm throwing the big rats or the big swim baits, the eye slides and that kind of stuff, because that's uh, those are painful to lose mm -hmm. for sure. That's that's painful, no doubt about it. Okay, uh, one thing I thought we ought to ask the audience here too, and you and I can share. <clears throat> Let's say that you're getting a brand new person. We've talked about line we've talked about some lures we've talked about reels and that kind of stuff what about a hook is there one specific hook we should recommend uh to the newbie or does that matter yeah i mean i i don't i think hook is i i think you have to have an ewg hook that's just me mm -hmm. um i mean you're gonna use a different hook for wacky rigging than you know a swim bait or a texas rigged worm or something i think it really depends on where you're fishing like down here everything that i fish i i need to make as weedless as possible yep yep but if you don't down here if you don't find grass you don't find fish so you got to be in that area i'm like i i, I think i have more three three out hooks you don't WGs than anything yeah. I mean, I, I usually call that, I need this. Uh, is there any way you can send me, you know, some three and four out EWG Daiichi bleeding bait hooks? And then the next day, I've got 50 pounds of hooks on my front door. Wow. I wish I had a friend like that. Yeah. Ron's the physical greatest. I mean, Trocar, those are insane sharp hooks. This is a three out EWG. That's the one I pulled off the shelf. Steve hates Daiichi. <clears throat> Michael. E EWG three ought is probably what I would recommend, but I agree with Herb here. You probably need about three different hooks. You need yeah. an EWG, a straight shank, yep. uh, you know, and a wacky, wacky style octopus type hook. 
Uh, if you had those three hooks, you, you, you could probably cover a multitude of techniques and be fine. You want to know what's funny about that? There probably isn't a package where you get all three of those in one package. You're right. Um, I have noticed in some of the uh, monthly tackle boxes, uh, like uh, what's the name of that? That company called Spearpoint or something like that. Spearpoint hooks, yeah. Uh, I've noticed that you will get packages from them that have, they're all the Spearpoint type hook, but it'll have like three different sizes in it. Yeah. Um, well, it would be cool to get like an EWG, a short uh, yeah. straight shank, and then a drop shot or a wacky rig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that would be. Here is a beginning. And you want know, I'm going to tell Ron about this tomorrow. In fact, yeah, <clears throat> I'm going to say that's what you should be selling. You know, you get one or two of each, and it would be so much easier than buying, you know, a pack of EWG. Really, because hooks are kind of. I think a pack of hooks might be like three or four bucks these days. Yeah. Yeah. Depending upon the brand, they can get yeah. pretty pricey. Uh, that kind of reminds me of, I think this is a great idea for new people. Uh, Cream Lures here makes these kits. Mm. They make a Texas rig kit, a Carolina rig kit. And uh, I don't know what other kits they make, but this is really clever. This thing is not very expensive. I think it's under $10 for this kit. I think it's seven or eight bucks, but Texas rig kit. And it comes with all the lures you need, plus the hooks, plus the weights. I mean, they're not tungsten weights, obviously. And then it's, it has all the directions on here. Like how how this works and how you rig each of these worms. It shows you how to tie the cinch knot. Okay. Nice. It, tell, it tells you. It gives you. Um, it gives you uh, a lizard. It gives you some lizards, some ribbon tail worms, some brush hogs, um, and then it, it and then it even has uh, other information. Basically, in this one little package, everything you need to know. The only thing it doesn't have is a rod and a reel. Mm -hmm. And to me, this is a great idea. And I don't know if these things sell very well or not, but if you're brand new and you could just go in the store and pick this one thing up, I mean, you'd be, you'd be set. You could, you could fish out of this one little package here for probably a few weeks. Uh, it's, it's really, really ingenious. And you know, there's other, there's other kits out there like, uh, I got another one around here from Yum, kind of like the Yum bass fishing kit. You can buy at Walmart for, I don't know, 10 or 12 bucks. And same sort of thing. It has, it doesn't have a lot of teaching in there as far as how to do things, but it does give you everything you would need to, to know. And, and uh, that's probably a good way for someone to start. Can I ask you a question? When you buy a, a, a pack of, wish I had it here. When you buy like a soft plastic bait and then you get it to your house and it says um, recommended hook is yeah. six, six out beast hook. Yeah. Berkeley, do, Berkeley does that on most of their packaging. Do, does that not make you mentally, I, that makes me mentally crazy. So I'm like, why do I, have, now I have to go buy, like the beast hooks are like eight forty nine, eight fifty. dollars <laughs> yeah. even I think I might have spent $11 on three hooks. I spent... $12 on the baits and then I'd spend another $11 on the hooks. I'm like, it makes me crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So what he's talking about here, if you've never seen this, like see this here, it, it shows you right here that for these grubs, they recommend a jig head eighth ounce to eight to half ounce. Well, yeah. that in and of itself, uh, I think is actually a good idea because if you've never fished a grub, you're going to do it wrong. And, and that's what you need. You need some sort of a ball head jig, you know, to fish a grub. But I, I do get your point. You know, the owner beast hook is, you know, those each hooks like a dollar each or something crazy. Uh, maybe they're more than that. I don't know. I mean, they're expensive. Yeah. I, I remember thinking I bought this lure. I got this lure. And now, well, I did get the lure for free, so I shouldn't be complaining too much. But then I was like, now I got to go buy eight, 
eight fifty for three hooks, and I was like, no, no, I can't. Do it. So then, of course, I was trying every other hook, and none, no hooks made it work right. And then I'm like, okay, I'll buy, I'll buy the, I'll buy a two, two or three packs of Beast hooks, and then I yeah. got them, and I've never used the baits ever since. I'm just like, no, I, they look great, you know, they swim real well, but. It's there just, are some lures like uh, like the Working Class Zero Citizen Soft Plastic Swim Baits. They have made those to fit perfectly with like uh, a ten aught owner beast hook, you know, and weighted with a with a half ounce weight on the yeah. belly, you know. And you can use other hooks, but what they say is, we guarantee you, if you use that specific hook, it's going to work right every time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you're gonna and if you're gonna spend you know seventy five dollars for a soft plastic bait, maybe you should go ahead and pay the five dollars for the hook. Yeah, well, I can't they give you the give you it if you're gonna, gonna pay <laughs> seventy five dollars for a lure. Please, for the love of God, give me the right the right <laughs> hook. I mean, you're designing it for that hook anyway. Just throw it in the package for me, please, and just make it eighty one dollars, and I, I'll be very, I'll be a lot happier. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Other lures that you might recommend, Steve? So we talked about Wacky Rig Worm. We talked about the swim bait. We talked about the chatter bait, the spinner bait. My last one was to make it as easy as possible, a jointed hard plastic swim bait, like the Buka Baby Bull Shatter oh, or okay. something that way. Okay. Something that will mimic a bluegill or mimic something and all you got to do is cast it and just hopefully not swim it too deep and catch weeds. Um, the, the, my one problem with when newbies get a hard plastic jointed bait or a crankbait or something like that, that's just easy to use is they have a tendency to really stick themselves the first few times with the hooks when they yeah. catch a fish. You're right. Um, Treble hooks are can be a real problem. Yeah, for for new people and not knowing how fish shakes or not not knowing how to, I mean, we've all gotten hooks in our in our fingers. I mean, it's yeah, it's, yeah. it's something you have you you have to go through. But yeah. new people seem to hold the fish wrong. They'll you know they'll hold it by the gills or something or do something stupid. Yeah, yeah. Or they're I can't tell you how many people gra gra grab a bass and they think that the bass has got teeth. So they're yeah, scared yeah. to lift the bass. Right, right. And you're like, or just grab it. I, a lot of times I just tell, like I, Thomas gets really nervous on some of the big bass he catches. He doesn't want to hold them up. He thinks it's going to break their jaw or something like that. So he, uh -huh. a lot of times I'll just say, grab the back of the, right behind the, the back of the head, almost like you're grabbing yeah. a dog or a cat uh -huh. and hold it like that. And then let's pull the pliers out, but, or pull, pull the hooks out. But yeah. Um, I think a jointed a jointed swim bait is a good way to catch fish and easy. Uh, I worry about the treble hooks. I guess that's the best way to put it. Yeah, I thought the same thing. You know, I thought about uh, putting a crankbait on my list, but I, I I decided against it because of the treble hooks. Now, I did put the whopper plopper in there with the treble hooks, but the reason I did that is I really couldn't think of a top water other than a buzz bait, and I did think you know the buzz bait. Um, is an easy to fish topwater bait as well. As long as, as soon as you cast it, you are smart enough and you can pick up quick enough that I got to hold my rod tip up and I got to, I got to retrieve fast enough that this lure doesn't sink and then it makes the correct action. Uh, that's not that hard to figure out though. And really topwater wise, a buzz bait might even be smarter than, uh, than, the um, whopper plopper. Although I do like Dean's suggestion of the jitterbug. The jitterbug, of course, has treble hooks, but they're small treble hooks, and uh, you know they're not not terrible um, to to get out of a fish's mouth. Yeah, I think the problem with uh, with a buzz bait is, like you said, they you you most people don't know how to use a buzz bait properly. I mean, yeah. I'm not saying anybody who's on this. That watches our stuff probably doesn't know. Well, I fished with a, a a guy that that used it in open water, and I kept telling to him, telling him, 
I'm not sure I would use that in open water. <laughs> uh, not that you can't catch fish with it, a buzzbait mm -hmm. in open water, but a buzzbait really is is much better when you're in uh, lily pads and that kind of stuff because it, it will go right over and through a lily pad without getting stuck in it. And that's where those those ones work really well. Just like a because I thought about putting a frog on the list, but the problem with a frog is is that you really need to know the cadence of what you're doing but when you cast that. Yeah, that you do. And you do. I, it, I think a, a newbie would not have a lot of luck with a frog, to tell you the it, truth. Yeah, and, and not to mention most people don't. In most cases, most frogs need to be, when you get that bite, you need to stop for a second and, like, count to three before setting that hook. Yep. And, and that's, I mean, that's, like I said, that's one of those things I think when we get into another – episode of this and talk about some advanced techniques. Frog mm -hmm. fishing is one of those things that we could mm -hmm. really, you can really talk a lot about and, um, and really help people out on that type of fishing. Well, uh, I don't disagree with you at all. Um, it's, uh, it, it, it I, I think it'll be fun to talk about some of these more advanced techniques as we go along as well. And it is interesting, you know, sometimes you, 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 uh, see someone make comments here and yeah, I think down, it's hilarious. Yeah. Some of them are really funny, but also there's some that actually have very thoughtful, intelligent comments. And then they'll say things like, and I'm a newbie and you're like, really? I can't yeah. believe you're a newbie. You, you talk if like you're watching you, this channel and on my channel, you're not a newbie. Yeah, you, you talk like you're right you're, off that. You, you, you're way more experienced. Uh, but anywho, uh, the only other lure that I had, which we already kind of talked about, was the Cinco. Um, I, I think if a person kind of moved beyond this, you know, within short order, there's a few other techniques that they, they might want to get introduced to. And some of those would be the treble hook techniques. Another one might even be a jig. Yeah. Um, because, you know, if you get the right jig, you could swim the jig, you could hop the jig, you could drag the jig. And uh, if you're patient, you're going to catch fish with it, most likely. And a jig's going to catch you big fish, mm -hmm. which is fun. Uh, yeah, so what about rod? I noticed Booster's talking about a beginner rod. What kind of a beginner rod would you, uh, would you recommend? He says, ugly stick. It is hard to beat an ugly stick. Um, what are your thoughts about the rod? I, I I agree. I agree. Ugly stick is a good way to go. My first suggestion, my first thing I would say is get a one piece fishing rod. A one piece, you're going to feel it a little bit more, a little bit better. Uh, I don't know. I, I've never really put it casting against a two piece versus a one piece. Um, I think that if you can get in that six, six and a half foot range, you'll be in pretty good shape. You'll be able to cast a good distance. I think a medium, medium heavy rod is probably the right way to go only because you're, you know, uh, I think that like for me, just me, I like the whippy rods. That's the God's honest truth. I like the super light rods. I like mm -hmm. light line. I like light everything. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I think you have to grow into getting to that stage where mm -hmm. you're confident in what you're, it is. A heavier rod is going to act, is going to react faster, so you're not going to miss as many fish. So a medium heavy, medium medium heavy rod is pretty good. Six six and a half would be all right. Um, I mean, it isn't hard to be. The ugly stick makes it. I mean, for thirty bucks, you can't beat an ugly stick. Yeah, they're super tough. Yeah. Um, I, I uh, thought about this quite a bit, and I really think a beginner rod, you're gonna only going to have one rod. I pretty much agree with what Booster says here. I would suggest a six-foot or shorter medium rod. I would not do medium heavy. Uh, and the reason not is because I just think a medium rod is versatile enough that it could cover a lot of these super light techniques like little bitty like throwing a jitterbug or throwing throwing little little lures tiny lures you could even put you know crappy lures and and those kind of lures and and it would cover those techniques as well you could put a mep spinner on a medium rod and do real well on it um there's a lot of 
bass lures that 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 uh, if you're just looking for one all around rod, I would go with a medium shorter rod until until you get more experienced. And then my next choice obviously would be a medium heavy rod, with, yeah. and, and it'd be longer. Yeah, I mean once you start getting to that uh, seven foot, seven and a half foot. There's there's a huge difference, but you want to when you start getting to that that level and you only fish from shore or that kind of stuff. Sometimes while you get more casting distance, like working a bait is a lot more of a chore for you. I mean, you gotta you gotta you know the cadence of walking the dog and that kind of stuff is a little bit harder for you because it's it's a much longer rod. But yes. once you get once you start getting the hang of it, then like I said. Uh, Walking the dog is like, I, I, I've had a few people say, I can't do it. And I'm like, you can do it if you really work at it, but you got to watch, you got to watch how the lure reacts to either a quick twitch or a longer twitch. Cause there's some baits like I haven't, I haven't put it up yet. I don't even know if it's here. So I got this riot sent me this, the hell name is this riot baits. It's a top water. It's called the Ronin. I don't know if you can see that thing. Yet. Yeah, I can see it. Yep. So if you look it at this, like a Sammy. Yeah. If you look at it, that that bait is going to be, you know, it's got this nose. Yep. That is going to make the water here, but then it's that belly there makes mm -hmm. that that bait just glide really mm -hmm. back, really well back and forth. Yeah. But if you do, and the, by the way, the, the hooks are really sharp because that just stuck in me. But if you use quick twitches, it doesn't run well. It's one of these baits that wants to go like this. Oh, that uh -huh. makes any sense. Yeah, kind of broad sweeping. Short like this. So you got to kind of look at the, oh, mother of goodness. Um, <laughs> so it is sharp. Yeah. Uh, so you got to you got to kind of play with it and then know what what it's, what the, how, how it works with whatever kind of twitching you're doing. And then, uh, and then once you get that cadence down, then it's, then it's, it's it's like muscle memory. You just instantly know what what it's going to do right away. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Texas Huntsman's right. I mean, where you fish is going to change the answers here. Mm -hmm. uh, it just is, and so it's hard to say. Generally speaking, this is this is the perfect newbie rod or the perfect newbie whatever, but. On a broad scale, I, I still think the medium is probably the best overall choice. You know, yeah, if you're in yeah. Texas, you're right. You got to beef it up a little bit. Yeah, you're in Texas. Everything is bigger in Texas. I mean, right. looking at uh, at some of these places in Texas where they're catching these, you know, Sixth Sense did that video with, I don't even know his name, and he had 65 pounds of fish and five fish. I mean, when your average fish is 12 pounds, <laughs> Most people don't get a 12 pound fish in their career. Yeah. And you exactly. caught, they caught like, I think maybe three of them were two or three of them were nine pounders and they had a 14. And I mean th that, that kind of milk. Yeah. Milken. Is it Milken? Yeah. Milken. Yeah. I mean that, that video was just ridiculous, but yeah. they were throwing like that a rig that had like 90 lures to it. it yeah, was yeah. The craziest a rig I've ever seen in my life. Um, but I mean, Texas, the Texas fish are, I mean, if you're not, if you're not heavy rods and stuff like that, you're, you're in trouble. Yeah. I you mean, are I, trouble. I'll be honest. I've, I've had to switch from my medium light rods to a faster rod over the last couple of months because I was losing too many fish. Uh, -huh. uh, I wasn't, I'm, I was, you know, you know, when you have those soft tip root, uh, rods, yeah. You you need to penetrate that fish's mouth, and it wasn't. Uh, I wasn't. I wasn't able to do it. That's the truth. So that's when I went back my karma rods that I got. I don't even know how many years ago, and I've been fishing those not exclusively, but I mean, you know the story. I've been fishing them a lot lately. Yeah, you know, uh, it's interesting because uh the we we don't even get into conversations like the tip of the rod and the taper and all those kind of things but that stuff really matters yeah when you're talking about it's it, it's oftentimes a difference between landing most of your fish and not landing your fish uh so 
it, people don't even look at that. You know, you go to Walmart and you buy a thirty dollar ugly stick, and you don't even know what kind of tip the thing's got on it. They don't don't even, they probably don't even put on there what kind of tip it has. Uh, yeah. it, it's it's my guess is it would probably be a moderate tip at best. It wouldn't be a, an extra fast tip, probably not even a fast tip. But uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, on my bait casters, I have medium heavy rods. They're they're sticks. Yeah. So because if I'm if I'm using them, I know I'm first off I'm going to be fishing in um, heavy weeds or heavy grass and stuff like that, and I need something to pull that fish out of that stuff. So I, I, and I was never one of these people that thought I need a different rod for different circumstances. And I've had to change that whole philosophy over the last three or four years. There's certain yeah. rods I use for certain lures. There's, um, Absolutely. it's, it's just how it is. It, 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 unfortunate, it's unfortunate because then you end up spending more money on rods and crap. Yep. But yep. Have you heard of this, uh, have you heard of this company called Sticks Rods or Sticks Fishing I Rods? I know my big Topwater Johnny's on too. So yeah, I saw Topwater Johnny. How's it going, man? Uh, they've got um, the guy, the YouTuber, informative fisherman. He's apparently an owner of this oh, yeah. company. He's apparently owner of this rod company. They only sell six rods. Six rods. Each one is a is a specific technique rod, and they're color coded. So, you know, the blue rod does this and the, you know, the, the red rod does that and whatever, but they say all you need six rods and these are the six rods you need. And you buy all six of our rods. I think all six rods cost like 500 bucks. So you're paying about 90 bucks a rod and this covers all the techniques you'll ever need. Hmm. That's a good idea. It, it is a good marketing idea and it's an interesting concept. Um, I, I wonder if anybody here has seen them or tried them. But uh, I just heard about them uh, here in the last week or so, and I, I haven't even gone to look at the website, but I know some people are, are kind of of that ilk. I do have a video up, and I believe in, in this. Uh, I learned this from another YouTuber years and years ago. He came up, he talked about his six-rod system and how with basically five or six rods, you can pretty much cover every technique. Mm -hmm. The exception there would be like, if you're going to start throwing a uh, mega bass, I slide 262 that's literally 10 inches long and weighs seven ounces, uh, you're going to need a very specific rod for that bait. But generally speaking, you probably can cover almost every technique out there with about six rods. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I have like three or four, I guess, probably that are different different stuff. And, but like I said, I, I really like to go that as that, that same route. I, I either, I catch them on that ultralight rod stuff or I don't. And like I said, I I've had to make that complete change of mental capacity, mental breakdown, everything. I don't even know what to say on fishing rods recently. Cause I was just, I was not landing the fish that I wanted to land. And I, it, it only made sense to me that it was the, unfortunately it was the rod because the rod was too light and I wasn't getting that penetrate, that hook penetration in the fish's face. You know, uh, another thing that interests me is Ned Katie, the guy, again, the guy who invented the Ned rig, he's got his five or six rods that he uses. They're all the exact same rod. And what he's done is he has pretty much spent years and years only fishing finesse. He is a finesse fisherman through and through. He does not power fish. He does not, you know, he doesn't throw, he doesn't even mess with those techniques. His goal is he wants to catch as many fish as possible. He believes that finesse fishing is the way you catch as many fish as possible. And he's going to go out and throw a net rig. He's, and he's going to do that every single time, every day, no matter what the conditions are. And to me, that blows my mind as well. It, it actually, I mean, I cannot, I cannot have that kind of narrow of a focus. You know, I, I have no problem going out on a day and say, I'm only going to fish the Ned rig today, but I can't do that day after day, after day, after day, after day. That just blows me away. But when you like, like, uh, I'm, I, I'm not going to blow any minds here. I am so confident with a wacky rig DOA five inch worm. I know for a fact 
I, I mean, I know for a fact, you put me on a body of water, I'm going to catch a bass on that. If there's, if there's bass in the pond or lake or whatever, I'm going to catch one on that bait every time I go fishing. I know, I know that if, there's times when I, I go out there and fish and I can, I can tell if I'm, if I'm going too fast with it or, and I know instantly I need to slow down for just a minute here or I need to hit a certain bank or whatever it is. I look at it and that's, ex I can tell you, you, you having that confidence in one lure is mm -hmm. pretty, it's pretty exceptional to have that, that thing. It's almost like a fallback. Absolutely. Like, as much as it's crazy to talk about top honor, Johnny go, and I go out fishing every Thursday, usually Thursday morning. So we go to the same bond. We meet each other. We talk. We talk shop about everything. I confide in him to, in a lot of stuff. I bounce ideas off of him. He's just a great dude. But I know, and he would if he was on here, he would tell you, Steve's taking the damn worm with him every time we get there. <laughs> yeah, I might not I say I'm going to use it. Yeah. But at some point in time, I'm going to go. Okay, it's time for me to catch a fish. And let's just get the stink off of me. <laughs> yeah. And once that happens, I might go back. But I, as soon as I can, I put, I, not as soon, but I'll, I get, you know, I start going, okay, I didn't wake up this early to not catch something. So no, I'm, no. Ca I'm casting a worm right now. I, I like Booster's comment here. You know, he says you can grow into more advanced stuff once you fall in love with fishing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, your, your point really ties right in with this keep it simple. Just like I said earlier, keep it simple, pick one or two techniques, practice, practice, practice of those techniques till you get good at those techniques. You're going to fall in love with it. And then you can start branching out. And these techniques that we've talked about initially are great ones. Pick any one you want out of the ones we've talked about. Pick that worm up, pick that chatterbait up, pick that spinnerbait up and just throw it, throw it, throw it, throw it, throw it. And you're going to start getting good at it. You're going to start having lots of confidence in it. And it's great to have a confidence bait that you can fall back on. I think one thing that beginner, beginner anglers need to do more than anything, once you get your tackle box and you get, you know, you got your Plano box or whatever you've got and you got the whole thing, practice casting. I cannot yeah. tell you like, Okay, I'm going to tell – this is 100% true story. There's no exaggerations on this one. So I hired a guy to take my dad and I red fishing. Now, I didn't hire him. He was a friend, and he's like, I want to take your dad fishing. I love talking to him. You know, my dad and I – my dad taught me fishing when I was younger, and uh, I just loved it more than he did. I guess that's the best way to put it. So we go fishing and we get on this boat and we're both on the front of this boat and this guy's pulling us on this polling platform behind us. And he's, Tim says, do me a favor, see that, that post with that sign that says, you know, something on it, cast at it. I want to see how good you are at casting. And I'm like, you know, whipping that out with one hand. And I think I dinked it off the thing and he started laughing. He goes, oh, Steve, we're going to have a really good day. And my dad wound up and instantly wound back like this and cast. And we all, both of us started looking like, you know, <laughs> where did it go? <laughs> and he's like, Dave, where did it go? And I'm like, dad, what the hell? My dad on the way back, let the line out of his line and the line went over Tim and shot behind us. <laughs> So he he said, it, 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 I'm not joking. He said instantly, from now on, Steve will cast for you, Dave. If that just let Steve. Know. <laughs> and, he, and he was, and my dad was a. I, I I hope my dad doesn't watch this. My dad was offended. I mean, he was he was mad. And then, of course, I'm joking. Like thirty seconds later, a, a redfish tail popped up, and I zing it like within three inches of this fish uh -huh. and then handed the, I just handed the pole right to my dad. I said, you're getting one right now. <laughs> but you, you, I think casting is something that is unbelievably important. Yes, accuracy, it is. Having that accuracy or knowing how far a lure will go and knowing 
the how to work it and that kind of stuff. But making that exact cast is a uh, perfect cast is crazy important. I don't know if you agree. I totally agree. I mean, you here's a couple of basic rules uh, to help you become a better fisherman. One, your lure has to be in the water for you to catch a fish. It does have to be. It's got to be in the water. And there are certain spots where the fish are usually hanging out. And if you can get that lure in that spot, like next to the stump, next to the rock, uh, along the edge of the grass line, if you can get the lure in that location, you increase your odds of catching a fish exponentially. It goes way up. Unbelievable. So casting is absolutely critical. Accuracy is, is like John Gill says, accuracy is greater than distance. It absolutely is. You've got to be able to accurately cast if you really want to enjoy fishing. You And it's not about just randomly throwing it out there and, and bringing it back. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you just randomly cast, you, you're, you're not going to catch nearly as much fish as you would if you're throwing at targets. Yeah. Uh, if there's something in the water, you need to hit it. That's that's the God's honest truth. If that's you, right. There's, if there's grass someplace or lily pads or a stump or something that those fish can just sit by and just ambush bait, you're. I mean, it doesn't mean you're not going to get bites in the middle in blind casting. That's that that happens quite a bit, but like edges and points and things like that will exponentially make your life better in catching fish if you can hit those spots. It absolutely will. And I did a, a live stream on the water a while back where I did an amazing job of demonstrating how to put a buzz bait in a tree. <laughs> <laughs> and, and not only did I demonstrate how to do an amazing job of putting a buzz bait in a tree, I also demonstrated how it was impossible to retrieve the lure out of the tree. And uh, <laughs> here's something, it's a hundred percent fact. You will not catch a single bass in a tree. No. You just won't. But the edges of the tree. The edges of the tree, if the tree's in the water, uh, you know. You can't uh, be scared to cast at it. You, you, you might got, lose yeah. the lure, but you can't be scared to cast at it. That's right. Uh, a accuracy is so critically important. Uh, and, uh, the other part about keeping your lure in the water, I've, I've been amazed at tournaments I've gone on with person, another person in the boat, co-angler in the boat behind me and literally in an eight hour day might spend three hours. I'm not kidding. Three solid hours tying on lures. Uh, you, you basically waste, three hours out of an eight hour day fishing tying on lures. That's a bad plan. You're not going to win tournaments that way. Yeah. And I'm kind of getting off the subject here, but th the bottom line is you can't catch a fish if your line's not wet. Yeah. If it ain't in the water, you're not catching them. Absolutely. You know, and, and there's a, there's a lot to be said for that. I mean, uh, <laughs> a booster, he is an expert. And getting a lure out of a tree. Yeah. I've had lots of practice. Every there, there really is a, you know, you'll cast into a tree. The worst thing you can do is set the hook. Yeah, I know the it. The thing you need to do is you need to let it, you need to kind of go back and forth and let that lure swing. Yes. And at the right time, then you hopefully That's right. you get it through. That's right. Uh, just like, you want to, if you've ever watched like pros get a snag, the instead of like, you know, ripping it through, they'll hold their rod, grab the line, yeah, do this and snap it so that the lure kind of penetrates, but then that snapping makes it go like this. Yeah. And it'll unplug it. I mean, we could That's do a right. whole show. We could do hours on that alone. For uh, sure. I, I learned that from Brandon Palinick. He he was like every other cast on that classic. He was doing this. How does this work? And then he, he showed it to me and I'm like okay, I need to start doing this from here yeah. on out. That's what I yeah. do. Yeah, it's amazing. It, it, it really does work a lot of times. Yeah. The old pop the line trick. You know what else doesn't win running 70 miles per hour all over the freaking lake? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that I mean, is true. You can spot hop so much and 
and yeah. But uh, that's kind of my list. Uh, Mine too. I think that that was actually a fun topic. Uh, and I, I, we've got a ton of great comments here from uh, folks. So I, I hope they enjoyed it. Hope you learned something there because uh, I actually did as well. I, it's one of the things I love about, about fishing is uh, I, I can, I, I've talked to a lot of people who are not fishermen who say, oh, how can you fish? How can you sit on there and fish all day long? It's so boring. You just sit there and wait and wait and wait for a bite. I'm like, there's nothing boring about fishing. It is, it is one of the most mentally taxing hobbies out there. You, I mean, there is so much strategy involved. There's so much, there's so many decisions that have to be made you know, constantly. Um, and it, it, it's one of the reasons I love fishing is because it's such a mental challenge. Yeah. You know, it, it it's incredibly challenging and, uh, it, it's, it's a fun thing. You know, when you just sit around talking about fishing, you think, uh, yeah, we're just going to talk about fishing. You learn so much, even when you feel like you got a lot of experience. And that's, it's one of the great, great things about doing the show with you. It's, 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 it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I appreciate it too. Yeah, we 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 we, we are gonna. We should mention we're gonna have after this week. We're probably gonna have a little bit more. We've talked about doing some like some tournament updates every week, so we can mm -hmm. talk about kayak fishing tournaments and mm -hmm. the elites because the elites NPFL is going this weekend, and so is Major League Fishing on Chickamauga. To be honest, Major League Fishing in Chickamauga could be absolutely disgusting weights and yeah and really npfl down here right now as crazy as this sounds i know this is going to sound crazy these guys i mean the bluegill spawn is i mean it's on i mean it's flat out on right now awesome these guys for npfl someone finds some some bluegill uh stuff i wouldn't be surprised if you don't see a couple giant fish come out of uh Harris chain tomorrow wow that would be fun to watch uh, uh terry scroggins i think it was last year or the year before exact same time on your frog fur uh put down a i mean to say he put a beat down on everybody in that the tournament that he, he was in i think he had 39 he had five fish 39 pounds and uh in the middle of the summer that's really good for us down here but he beat everybody like 15 or 18 pounds. I mean, uh, I mean, it could be one of those weekends. I, and I, I kind of, I'm going to cover, I think I'm going to go see MPFL Friday morning. Mm. I say that, but I, I said that with the major league fishing and I didn't even go out for major league fishing. Um, mm. But I'm hoping I go out to MPFL and do, I just want to put the drone out and do some stuff like that and do something yeah. different. So we'll That'd see. Cool. That'd be really cool. I have an ICAST meeting tomorrow morning, so I was going to do it tomorrow morning, but that ICAST meeting is really important. So, yeah. Right on. Water time is therapy time. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I agree. That is All right. I think we're about done, guys. Uh, uh, two hours came and went. Yeah, like that was that. fast. It flew by. Yeah. Uh, that was a great conversation. Appreciate everybody for your input and uh, sharing your knowledge with us all. It was great. Please, if you're not subscribed to the channel, head over to Get Your Fish On, Steve Chapman's fishing channel. It's a great channel, great content. Subscribe to his channel. Hit the notification bell to find out when he's posting his next video. Uh I'm almost at 6,000. I have, I have 20 packages at 6,000 to send out. Wow. I don't even know wow. if I've mentioned that. No, no, that's great. I don't know if I was supposed to mention that. Why not? <laughs> Heck yeah, you can mention it. Twenty. I have, I have 20 packages. There's six of them that have, have like two or three lures. There's subscription tackle boxes together. And then there's a bunch of them that are four or five packs of plastics and like three or four hard baits all together. So I've got awesome I've been putting together for since 5,000. That's great, man. 6,000 subs. Congratulations. That's yeah. awesome. I think I'm like a hundred away or 95 or 98. So maybe in the next month I'll make that.
to get to that level. Heck yeah. All right. We are finished, guys and gals. Have a great week and hope you have a great weekend of fishing. If you want to watch some more live streams, my Mr. Bass live stream will be Saturday night. Yes. Same time, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern. I'm in the chat room with those. Heck yeah. Steve's in the chat room on those, and we have a lot of fun on those as well. And we give away a lot of junk too. Lots of lures. It's a ton of fun. So have a great night, guys. We are ending in three, two, one. Goodbye. <laughs>